Bracha is daf chafei. If a man is not wearing anything from the waist up, he may say Kriyishma, but it's also for him to say Shman Ezri like that because he's standing in front of the king, you have to dress properly. If a person is in the restroom and he realizes that he's wearing his tefillin, he shouldn't just jump up and run out. That could be dangerous because the first discharge must come out, but he puts his hand on his tefillin. What if a person has soya waste on his hands? According to Rav Huna, that's not a problem. The Pasuk says, Kol the parts of the body that say the praise of Baruch, those have to be clean. In other words, the mouth and the nose. According to Rav Chizda, since it says in the Pasuk, Kol all my bones, all my limbs are saying praise, therefore every single part, including the hands, has to be clean. If the source of the smell is there, according to Rav Huna, you have to distance yourself four Amis from the source, not so much the smell. According to Rav Chizda, it doesn't matter where the source is, it matters where the smell ends. From that point on, you have to distance yourself for Amos. In the Brisa, one Brisa it says, what kind of waste are we talking about? We're talking about human, dog, pig, and chicken waste. Taisa says it's not really chicken, it's turkey or a lot of chickens, the chicken coop. According to Rava, the only time dog and pig waste are also to say Krishna from them is when they are used to tan hides, and therefore it's a very foul smell. Now, if you could see the tsaya, it doesn't matter how far away it is from you, as long as you can see it, it's us to say Kriyashma in front of it. If it's tenth fachim above or below you, then it's mutter to say Kriyashma, that's considered another domain. If it's inside a glass jar, it's mutter to say Kriyashma in front of it. But when it comes to erva, if a glass separates you in the erva, that doesn't give you a head there, because over there it's still an erva. If you have a very small amount of tsaya, kolshu, then all you need to do to cover it is you spit on it with thick spit. If the tsaya is in a hole in the ground, you just put your shoe on top of the hole, and that's okay. What if the tsaya is stuck to the bottom of your shoe? That's a teiku whether or not you're allowed to say kriyashma. Now the halacha is, if a mitsaira whose tummy is underneath a tree, the tree is like a tent, is like oil, so anybody that's tar that walks underneath the tree becomes tummy. But if somebody that's tar is underneath the tree, and the mitsaira walks by the tree, the person that's tar remains tar because that's not his domain. Says Abai, if so, the same thing applies to tsaya. In other words, if tsaya is moving by, it's moving by, then you are allowed to say kriyashma. Only if it's stationary, it's also. Rava says no. When it comes to tsaya, the Pasuk says, where you are, you need to be in a pl- proper place with Gdusha. Since it moved by you, then in that moment, it wasn't Kaddish, it's also for you to say kriyashma. A reach, a smell that doesn't have a source. So the Gemara brings an example that the Yeshiva Bachram, they would sleep on these machatzalais, but their friends would learn next to them. Now when a person sleeps, he doesn't really have full bodily function control. And it's possible that there's some sort of reach smell that comes from the Bachram. Nevertheless, you're allowed to learn Torah. However, you're not allowed to say Kriyashma. Now if a person himself is the one that created that smell, He's not allowed to learn Torah. He must distance himself from that smell. What about if we don't know whether what you're looking at is meriglayim or, let's say, apple juice? It's a suffolk. So, if it's, even if it's in a heap of trash, where typically there's a lot of tzoyah and a lot of meriglayim, it's mutter because the isra midaraisa of St. Kriyashma in front of meriglayim is in front of a stream coming out of a person. But once it hits the ground, it's not also midaraisa. So, therefore, hachamim wearing geyser if you have a suffix. However, when it comes to suffix tzoya, you don't know if you're looking at chocolate or tzoya. So in that case, if it's in a pile of trash, it's usur. Why? Because in trash, usually you find tzoya. If it's in the house, there's machlaikis, because one number says, you typically don't find tzoya in your house. What is the shear? How much merag is it that it makes it also to say Kriyashma. One man says, In other words, it's so moist that if you touch it with your hand, you can make something else moist. The other man says, Rabbi Yossi says, all you need is tefeyach. As long as it makes your hand moist, it doesn't have to make something else moist. And finally, we have Geniva, who says that if you just see the outline of it on the, on the ground, even though it's not moist at all, it's still also. What's the shear in soya? We have a number of shearim. One shear is that if it becomes hardened on the outside, it's no longer considered soya. The other shear says up until the point where it has cracks in it. The other shear says as if it's as hard as earthenware, and if it breaks. The halacha is, Rabbi says, that it has to be as hard as earthenware in order for it not to be so in order for you to be able to say Kriyashma. And this brings us to Ahmed Beis. It says in the Mishnah we learned that if a person is inside the mikvah and he realizes that it's the time to say Kriyashma, 
and he doesn't have enough time to get out and get dressed, he should say Kriyashma in the water. Now, number one, we're talking about Vasikin. So it could be he goes according to Rabbi Shua that says that there were people called Vasikin that were, they were marked to say Kriyashma by Netzachama, but other people could sit up until three hours. The other point the Gemara makes is that what kind of water are we talking about? Either, according to one the Rama, the water is dirty water or it's not see through, so therefore it creates a barrier between your eyes and your erva, or your heart and your erva, or any other part, let's say your heel and the erva. Another man says, no, we're talking about clear water, but nevertheless, there's no issue of libai roya es erva, and there's no issue of ain of roya erva. La halacha, if your heel, your own heel, touches your erva, it's also to say Krishna, but if your heel could, so to speak, see the erva, that's mutra to say Krishna. The erva of a guy, halachically, is considered erva. I would think, because it says in the Pasuk, Besar Chamor and Besar, when they have halacha of a Chamor, Komash Malon is still considered an erva. There's a concept called Graf Shari. Rei, Ri. There's a vessel that usually contains excrements, Tsoya, Meriglaim, and now it's completely clean. Nevertheless, it's also to say Kriyashma in front of it because it absorbs, it's a disgusting most Kli. According to the Tanakama, the entire house, even if it's a hundred amas long, it has the halacha of dalad amas when it comes to the halacha of tzoya. According to Rav Shimon Gamliel, if you have tzoya in front of a bed that doesn't create a mechitza, and therefore you have to distance yourself four amas from the tzoya, if there's a bed between you and the tzoya, that creates a mechitza. What if the tzoya is below the bed? Well, very interesting halacha. If the bed is only three tzvachim above the ground, then we have the concept called lavad, and it says if the bed is on the ground and it buries the tzoya. If the bed is ten tzvachim above the ground, then it's also to say Kriyashma there. And if it's between 3 and 10, the Gemara remains in a Suffolk. If the Meraglaim, you are in a regular Kli, so it depends. According to Rav Nachman, if you put water in the Kli first, and then you pour the Meraglaim on top, on top of the water, then the Meraglaim become bottle, drop by drop. As it hits the water, they become bottle. However, if the Merig Lime were in the Kli first, and then you try to be mevatel with water, well, that's a machlaikis, whether a culture who works or you need a Revius. The other man, the Rav Yosef, says no. It's the exact opposite. If you put in water before the Merig Lime, then there's a machlaikis whether you need a culture or a Revius. But if the Merig Lime were in there first, you certainly need a Revius. And finally, for today, there's an Isser Tashmish in a house that has a Sefer and Tefillin. You either remove the Sefer and Tefillin from the house, or you build a Mechitz if you can't, that's 10th Fachim high, or you put the Sefer and Tefillin in a double wrapping. Have a wonderful day.